Aleutian communities participate in the coastal community ocean observers. C202, a regional community driven ocean observation network. Morning. Thanks for the opportunity to give you a brief interview of a program that um, we started about two years ago. Peter Windsor apologizes he wasn't able to be here. He's a physical oceanographer with the University of Alaska Fairbanks School of Fisheries and Ocean Sciences and um, had started this program about two years ago. Uh, my name is Tula Holman. I'm a marine biologist with UAF and um, also with the Alaska Sea Life Center. It's a private nonprofit um, organization in Seward, Alaska. And I also want to note that Peter is Swedish and he usually starts his um, presentations with a joke about some of the other Scandinavian countries, including Norway and Finland, and that happens to be where I'm from, so <laughs> I'm going to skip the joke because I don't know any of those jokes. <laughs> there might be a joke about the Swedes later on. So this program, uh, the phase one, was um, started in 2014 with um, uh, support from the um, NPRB, and uh, Peter worked with a couple of colleagues from UAF, Courtney Carothers, she's a social scientist, and Seth Danielson, also a physical oceanographer, with uh, data support from Liz Dobbins. And uh, they um, initially started the program at three communities, Kaktovik, St. Paul, and Old Harbor. And um, I'm going to really thank all the people in those communities who have helped um, successfully launch this effort. And some of the people might be in this room. I know Lauren is on the phone. So thank you for your support of this project. And our logo was designed by St. Paul High School student Marjorie Baker. So thanks to her for this really cool logo. So the philosophy of the program so started in 2014 with St. Paul as the first community. And the <coughs> primary goal of the program is to collect high quality, scientifically valuable, long-term near-shore data. And uh, the next two points are really key points. The um, goal of the program is to collect both locally and regionally relevant data by working with the community members to help guide the sampling and keep the science flexible to um, address local uh, priorities and concerns. Uh, the program compensates the partners and communities for their time and effort, and then another key goal is to return data back to the community real time through school visits, public presentations, and um, an online database. So a little bit more about the physical background and context for the program. The uh, near shore zone is um, uh, oceanographically a unique um, area with freshwater input from rivers and ice melt and um, is likely to undergo some significant changes in the future because of um, warming temperatures. And this same zone is also an important pathway for um, the dispersal migration and staging of marine biota, i.e. a lot of the natural resources that are important for coastal communities. This slide is an example from a long-term time series on oceanographic parameters collected at the GAC-1 station near Seward. It's a um, um, program that's been going on for decades now and has proven to be immensely valuable because of this long-term time series on the water properties in the region. And these types of time series are going to be um, obviously incredibly valuable for understanding the large-scale changes in the marine system. They also can be fairly expensive to obtain. So our premise with the um, C202 program is that working closely with the local communities, we would be able to establish a um, similar time series at multiple locations and over long periods of time with um, collaboration with the communities. And St. Paul the first C202 site has now very successfully collected this type of data for two years. Here are the sampling locations. The C202 program provides the community with the resources, the tools, and the training to collect the oceanographic data. And uh, 
here's a, uh, an output from the data from St. Paul. And this is um, from last winter, and there's already over 90 data points of observations for temperature, salinity, and density across the um, transects and stations near St. Paul. So very valuable data. Now we're moving into phase two and um, hoping to um, expand the geographic scope of the program by adding two more communities, Cold Bay at the tip of the Alaska Peninsula and uh, Kotzebue. And another expansion that we're um, working on is uh, incorporating a uh, biological component into the monitoring program an observation program. The nearshore food web is very rich and again provides natural resources for the coastal communities. And uh, we are in the next phase planning two different elements to add on to the observation uh, network. Uh, the new um, CTD, um, CTD um, Equipment now includes a, a fluorometer to uh, measure chlorophyll A fluorescence as a proxy for phytoplankton biomass. So in other words, we'll be able to get a measure of primary productivity at the, at the measuring stations. And then also are looking at including uh, some bivalve sites into our um, observation network, bivalves being sentinel uh, filter feeders and important in the near shore um, transition zone between the ocean environment and the terrestrial environment and because of their filter feeding habits also are sensitive to changes in water conditions so we're hoping to establish sites where we can use bivalves as um, measures of water quality and environmental conditions in the near, so near shore. And the first site with these integrated physical biological observations is uh, another unique site in the Aleutians region called Bay, which sits on a um, narrow isthmus between the nor northern Gulf of Alaska and the Bering Sea and offers us access to two oceans at the same uh, community. And we just uh, this summer implemented our first instruments and started taking measurements in Cold Bay. The education component it's been real priority for us. We have some modules that we've developed that we can take to schools. And um, the scientists of the program visit the communities regularly or can offer the local teachers um, teaching modules if they'd like to use them in their school programs. Here's Seth Danielson uh, looking at plankton with local uh, children from <coughs> Old Harbor. And again, high priority for the program is to return the data to community. We do this different ways. The scientists visit the communities regularly to give presentations, um, interpret data, discuss the data with the community members, and we maintain a website that, um, and here's an, an output from the website, so it is real time. Here's an, the most recent output from the um, St. Paul uh, site and the data from the mid-July measurements is already on the website. It offers opportunity to retract all the original data or plot the data in a graphic form. And then just to finish with a few initial learning outcomes, um, bullet num number one, be Beware oversaturation, fatigue of scientists, and not mean tired, tired scientists, but people getting tired of the scientists. So we want to develop a very um, like a mindful dialogue and working relationship with the community so that we give information back to the communities and maintain the motivation to work with the program. Uh, do not underestimate the time investment. It takes a lot of time to develop working relationships with the communities and a two-way dialogue. Remain adaptable in all aspects of implementation. Be begin modestly build relations and be in it for the long run. We are standardizing science kits, science kits among the projects and partners so that the data can be broadly uh, comparable 
within our network and then also linking with other networks and um, such as the uh, crow and mosquito fleet concept uh, with Oceans Canada. And uh, I think that's it. There is uh, our email addresses are there. And I um, want to thank our funding sources, the NPRB for the uh, initial two-year phase for the program, AUS for up updating our um, measurement equipments for a, um, to include the fluorometer and a more um, precise um, CTD cast. And uh, the coal base site was added thanks to a community service payment to Alaska Sea Life Center, and also we received really significant in-kind support from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and USGS, and I especially want to mention uh, Stacy Lowe, who is the refuge biologist at Isenbeck National Wildlife Refuge. Thanks. <laughs>